Christians are called to care and to pray for government. Welcome to today's Daily Dose. It's prayer and fasting week. So here's a question. Does God care about our government? Should Christians care about our governmental leaders, our governmental policies? Well, I feel like a lot of Christians, they take one of two approaches. They either think government is unrelated and disconnected from God's heart, and therefore it's not important to the church. In other words, many Christians have bought into the whole separation of church and state myth. But what happens when, that, when, when light doesn't show up? Darkness remains. Darkness even advances. And likewise, what happens when the light and the truth of God doesn't engage in our government, in our state, in our nation, in our community? What happens when, when truth is kept from our policies that affect people? Well, darkness remains and it can even advance. Laws are made that hurt people. Laws are made that hurt families and promote sinful behavior, all while creating and building barriers that keep the goodness of God, the gospel, and righteousness away from the very people who need Jesus. Look, it's a good thing for Christians to want our nation, our communities to prosper, to prosper even economically and spiritually in all ways that are, are for the good of people. Look, God even instructs his people. He says, also seek the peace and prosperity. In other words, demand the welfare of the city, the community to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, if the community prospers, if your state prospers, if your nation prospers, you too will prosper. That's somewhat of a paraphrase of Jeremiah 29, verse 7. So here's another reason we want our nation, and yes, our government and its leaders, to know God, to fear God, and to be impacted by the Lord. Because of this truth, truth blessed or blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance, Psalm 33, 12. Look, I don't know about you, but I want my nation, I want my community, and of course, I want my children, the, the, the generations following me, I want them to be blessed, and so does God. Look, we should want God's goodness for our community. There's no place that doesn't need to be affected by God's goodness, by truth, by his kingdom, his ways, his love. But on the other hand, just because we pray for good leadership and for good God-fearing government doesn't mean that we are putting our hope in government or in man. We can't do that. Our hope is in no one else and in nothing else other than Jesus Christ and his righteousness, his goodness, his work. In fact, I would say that, that praying for our government and wanting God to show up in our government is actually us saying the exact opposite. It's a reminder that without God showing up, things are a mess. Without God showing up in our government, without him affecting our governmental leaders and moving in and through their lives, we are messed up. We're in trouble. And so what do we do? We pray for our government. You see, not only does God care about the condition of nations and governments, but God actually calls his church to pray for, intercede on behalf of our governmental leaders. And we find that in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2. Paul encourages and he says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. And then he gets specific. He says, for kings and all those in authority. Why? so that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Again, 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 3. So let's do that right now. Let's pray for our government. Let's pray for our governmental leaders. We need God to show up. And so, Lord, here we are. We come to you right now, Lord. And we lift up our governmental leaders to you, God. I, I pray, Lord, that you would put in place God-fearing men and women who listen to you, who know you, who know your voice, God, who are willing to follow you and not, not culture, God, not society, 
not the pressures of man, but God will follow you. God, I pray that you would put in place in our community, in our state, and in our nation, God-fearing men and women to lead us in this area of government. Lord, I pray for those who are in government right now who don't know you, God, that you would show up in their lives, God, that you would you would pull the scales off of their eyes, their spiritual eyes, God, and that they would find you, God, that they would know you, that we would find salvation coming to our governmental leaders, Lord. God, I, I pray that there would be repentance in our nation where we've done things wrong, where we've dishonored you, where we've just where we've cooperated with that antichrist spirit that tears people down and keeps people from Jesus. God, I pray, God, that, that we would turn from our wicked ways. And God, that we would lean into you. God, we pray for our government. We pray for our governmental leaders. And we ask, God, that you would have mercy on us. God, you'd pour out your grace on us. And God, that you would prosper our land God, that you'd prosper us economically, you'd prosper our families, you'd prosper our children, Lord God, and that, God, that we would prosper spiritually. Lord, I pray that there would be a great revival, even in our government, Lord, even in our governmental leaders, God, that there would be a great revival, a great turning to you, for you and you alone are our hope. We need you, Jesus, and it's in your name that we pray, amen and amen.